Carla Hall is a force in food culture. More importantly, she stayed centered and positive in the face of adversity. Here are some of the tragic details that have helped make Hall who she is today. Carla Hall grew up middle class in Nashville, Tennessee, but her early home life had its troubles. Despite the fact that she's a very family-oriented person, Hall doesn't speak about her father, George Morris Hall, very often. She has disclosed that he was an alcoholic and that his battle with addiction is the reason why she doesn't drink. Hall's father also had a history of domestic violence, inflicting abuse on her mother, Audrey. Her parents divorced, then remarried, when Hall was young. By the time she was seven, they were divorced for a second time. Still, not all of Hall's recollections of her father are tragic. Sitting with her parents and sister at the dinner table are among her earliest childhood memories. Her father would discuss music and psychology, and Hall says she inherited her comedic timing from him. George Morris Hall died several years ago. One of the last memories Hall has of her father is sitting down together for soul food in Nashville. In a 2018 interview with Garden & Gun, Hall said, "...theater saved me from being bullied because I was a quirky kid and really shy." From age 11, Hall's passion was acting. She attended Nashville Academy Theater Camp every summer and took acting classes in high school. But when her application to Boston University School of Theater was deferred, Hall lost her way. She enrolled at Washington, D.C.'s Howard University, where her sister was a student. There, she majored in accounting, on the principle that she had liked her high school accounting teacher and enjoyed working with numbers. But two years as an accountant at Pricewaterhouse sent Hall into an existential crisis. She followed a group of young women to Paris in the late 80s, where she pursued modeling. In Paris, Hall and other black models would have Sunday suppers at the home of a woman named Elaine Evans. Hall listened to the other models talk about cooking, something she knew nothing about. I, mean, I think the most shocking thing about that is that models actually eat. I saw them! Yeah. But before leaving Europe, she began to buy cookbooks and make meals for friends. She told Garden & Gun, "...Paris ended up being the bridge between what I knew I didn't want to do and what I eventually wanted to do. She's gonna be a star. She returned to Washington, D.C. with the beginnings of her culinary career in the works. Many of Hall's memories are centered around Sunday suppers at her maternal grandmother's house. From her kitchen in Lebanon, Tennessee, Freddie My Price Glover, better known to Hall as Granny, prepared post-church soul food feasts of smothered pork chops, mac and cheese, collard greens from the garden, candied sweet potatoes, and cast iron cornbread. I just looked at her and waited until she poured those pork chops on the serving platter and oh my God. It was Granny who showed Hall the importance of cooking with love. It was what she always did until Alzheimer's disease took her from the kitchen and eventually claimed her life at the age of 96. Granny suppers remain at the heart of Hall's connection with food. But when she was young, Hall loved eating more than cooking and would often be found playing outside while Granny worked her magic in the kitchen. One of the first signs that Granny was losing her memory was seen in her signature dishes. In a 2022 speech to the Alzheimer's Association, Hall remembered, "...we all loved her macaroni and cheese so much that she served it every Sunday. There was one point when she served us macaroni noodles and milk. There was no cheese. It wasn't baked. Her disease progressed to the point that she no longer remembered family, but Hall recalled, "...touching her hands was powerful. If I close my eyes, I can feel her hands right now." For three years, Hall modeled in Paris and London, but in 1991, she was lured home by a newfound interest in cooking. When she catered her sister's baby shower with homemade smoked turkey, buttermilk biscuits, sandwiches, and chess pie, she promised to bring leftovers to a friend. Only, there weren't any. Guess what? I break my turkey down like a chicken. Yeah, just like a chicken." So she remade the food the following day and brought it to the doctor's office where her friend worked. The other employees were so impressed that they asked Hall for prices so they could order lunch from her every day. Hall made up her pricing on the spot, naming her company Lunch Basket after the picnic basket she packed the food in. From there, she went door-to-door -door in the Washington, D.C. area, gradually building up her clientele. She reportedly didn't take a single day off for the next five years. As business picked up, she began delivering food in an old mail truck. Five years in, Hall felt that her food would be even better if she went to culinary school. So, at the age of 30, she enrolled at Maryland's L'Académie de Cuisine. In the wake of the unrest surrounding George Floyd's death in 2020, Hall opened up about a brush with police brutality in the mid-90s. She was driving home from a work engagement in D.C. when she coasted through a red light and was pulled over. Hall handed her license and registration to the officer, but was told to step out of her vehicle because her documents were expired. In disbelief, Hall found herself handcuffed and pressed against the trunk of her car as several other police cars arrived. As her fear mounted, a female officer advised that it wouldn't end well for Hall if she didn't stay calm. She was taken 
into a police station in handcuffs and eventually released. In speaking about this traumatic experience, Hall wanted to illuminate the dangers of racial profiling, telling ABC7 News, Sometimes I think I'm seen as Carla, but not really a black woman. I think sometimes I want to say that if you don't see my color, see my culture. Between attending culinary school and her catering business, Hall didn't have time for love. Then she met Matthew Lyons on an internet dating site, and just nine months later, they were married. When he found me was the first day that I actually had gone on to Match.com. Just before their wedding, Hall became pregnant, but she had a miscarriage about eight weeks into the pregnancy. Her immediate reaction was acceptance. Hall was in her 40s and hadn't planned the pregnancy, so she took the loss as a sign from the universe. She admits now that it might seem insensitive, but she simply asked the doctor what she needed to do in order to go to work and move on. Hall has no biological children, but is a stepmother to Lyons' son from a previous relationship. Season 5 of Top Chef was Hall's to lose, and lose she did. When the season finale kicked off, three contestants remained, Stefan Richter, Hosea Rosenberg, and Hall. Hall's cook with love strategy paid off until a major mistake cost her the whole competition. My strategy is to incorporate big flavors, comfort food, exciting but still a little refined. When the sous chefs were announced for the final meal, Hall was paired with season 3's Casey Thompson. While menu planning, Thompson pushed for using the sous vide method to cook New York strip steak and swapping a blue cheese souffle for the cheese tart Hall originally envisioned. But you let your sous chef talk you out of cooking the food that got you to the finale, and I'm not quite sure I understand that. Right. The changes made for major flaws in Hall's meal. Hall was teary-eyed as she acknowledged where it all went wrong, and Rosenberg became Top Chef. Fresh off her appearance on season 8 of Top Chef All-Stars, Hall signed on as a co-host of ABC's The Chew, an hour-long show all about food which debuted in 2011. But she didn't feel deserving of the opportunity at first. The learning curve was so intimidating, it gave her stomach pains and caused her to go home crying. Imagine having a job and thinking every day that you're going to get fired. She lived with that fear of being fired until she saw a psychic who advised her that she would be on the show for five more years. A similar surge of imposter syndrome flared up while writing her first cookbook, 2012's Cooking with Love, Comfort Food That Hugs You. Hall's lack of confidence caused her to overcompensate. Hall made some of the recipes in her first cookbook extra complicated in order to prove her command of the kitchen, but it was Hall's refreshing brand of authenticity that made her famous in the first place. Initially, the chew wasn't well received, but as time went on, the host got into a groove and Hall's effervescent personality shone through. It probably seems like I drink a lot of caffeine, which I do not. At its peak, the show amassed 3 million daily viewers. The Chew won Emmy Awards for Outstanding Informative Talk Show Host in 2015 and Outstanding Talk Show Slash Informative in 2016. Here she is. This is for the best host. And um, yeah, it's kind of heavy. But in 2017, co-host Mario Batali left amidst a flurry of sexual misconduct allegations that put an end to his celebrity chef career. And just one year later, after seven seasons and 1,500 episodes, ABC gave the chew the axe. Shocked by the decision, Hall suddenly found herself out of a day job. Black female chefs have never gotten the visibility they deserve. Hall has been instrumental in changing that, but even after achieving celebrity chef status, she's had to battle prejudice. For instance, Hall's salary for the chew was a fifth of what the male host made. She initially believed it was because she had less experience. However, she wasn't able to renegotiate her contract until the show's final season. In fact, Hall was only offered more fair compensation once the show was on the verge of cancellation. Perhaps more surprising was Hall having to defend her 2018 cookbook, Carla Hall's Soul Food, every day in celebration to her own team. Their insinuations that a soul food cookbook might alienate her white fan base didn't go over well. I am going to reclaim soul food because I really love being black. I love everything that we have contributed to this cuisine. Speaking to The Hollywood Reporter in 2020, Hall said, You don't say that to people who are Italian or Greek or Chinese or Indian, so why would you say that to me when I want to share my food? Why would soul food be for one group? For Hall, opening a southern restaurant in Brooklyn really seemed like a great idea. At the time, she was filming The Chew in New York, and it goes without saying that Hall and Soul Food are a match made in gastronomical heaven. Carla Hall's Southern Kitchen opened in Brooklyn's Columbia Street Waterfront District in 2016. A year later, it closed. How could Hall, a hardworking chef and lovable television personality, shutter her first restaurant so quickly? The answer, at least partly, was lack of know-how. Hootie-hoo, Kickstarters! She used a Kickstarter campaign to raise money for the restaurant, which caused some to scoff at the idea of such a high-profile chef resorting to public funding. Also, the Kickstarter and actual opening were nearly two years apart, prompting more than a few funders to grow suspicious. I could not 
predict how long it would take to actually find a space. The food at Southern Kitchen was one of its few saving graces, yet an overfixation on branding, its outer borough location, and inexperienced staff hurt the business. Two months in, there was an electrical fire and the walk-in fridge had to be replaced twice. What's more, Hall's commitment to the chew didn't allow her enough time at the restaurant. All in all, a recipe for disaster. Hall has spent much of her culinary career and beyond connecting to her roots and seeking out information about her ancestral history. When she took a test from 23andMe, a biotechnology company that uses genotyping to provide insight on genetic health and heritage, the genetic testing panel detected a predisposition to late-onset Alzheimer's disease. Hall wasn't exactly surprised. Her maternal grandmother died from the condition at 96, and Hall's mother was diagnosed with early dementia. Not one to come undone by a bout of bad news, Hall has embraced a series of preventative measures to help offset the risk of developing Alzheimer's. Her current wellness routine includes walking and working out with light weights three to five times a week, as dementia-related studies show that light exercise is beneficial to brain health. She's cut back on sugar, no easy feat for a judge on Food Network's Halloween Baking Championship, and is incorporating more whole grains and protein into her diet. In an interview with Marie Claire in 2024, Hall declared, I want to live until I'm 104, specifically because my great-grandmother passed away at 103, and I want to beat her.